I don't know what other people's Thursdays nights look like, but mine, mine is this. I'm not sure how much video editing I do actually one handed. So unfortunately, I'm not sure what I'll upload tomorrow, if anything. <clears throat> But that's okay, I guess. Because it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to Visual Thursdays. I'm your host, Anime Fan rk 2 k Hey, how's it going, Tom? Play more Katawa Shoujo. Today we actually begin the Rin Route. Which is um, a fan favorite for some. Um, we're going to start straight from the beginning. As in, we're going to... Skip mode straight from the beginning Just so we can see all the bad things happening, but very quickly Getting ready for best girl time fair Um, I, If you saw my tweets on Twitter, I have only one hand to use Yeah, this is this is probably the same for all of them you say yeah, of course you have to take care of you, you have to take care of yourself if You don't take care of yourself bad things will happen. Okay That's a that's a must it's absolute fact. So I don't know how different it is, but we've done all of these. I think we just say everything I need to know. I actually don't know how much it overlaps with uh, Emmy's route at the start either. So <clears throat> there's our friend, the nurse. Yeah, this is gonna be a quick going through the beginning chapter, meeting all the characters because you know that's something you have to do. Yeah. Yeah, so what happened? So to briefly explain uh, today, um, I know I'm starting to read route, which has no bearing on my hand whatsoever, luckily. But uh, I hurt my hand today at work, or at lunch. While, while, you know, I was at work, but I wasn't at work. When I was uh, getting lunch. I hurt myself, so. Um, let's see. You have to attack aggressively all the time, guys. <clears throat> Overlaps a fair fucking bit. Well, that's fair. I did not know that. Or rather, I didn't have the time to. It took. It takes a lot to set stuff up when you're um, when you uh, only have one hand to use. <clears throat> so, uh, I think uh, yeah. You always say I'm sorry. I don't mean so. Yeah, you have to always be nice to Hanako. You know, always be nice to Hanako. You know, say she's cute. Apologize for stalling her. Kenji's like, hey, she cute? And you go, hell yeah, she was cute. Never say she wasn't cute. Never do that. And then Kenji's gonna be like, oh, how could you say that? Except with a different voice, because I gave him a very different voice in that sound. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> so obviously, we've gone through all these options because there is overlap. So we're gonna read her book, because, you know, that's a thing. Don't bully Hanako exactly. Uh, Emmy runs into us. <clears throat> we meet Emmy. Um, well, Luto and uh, Misha get a thing, and then we meet uh, meet the uh, Tom's favorite character. Dun, dun, dun. All the girls have very good themes too, which is really cool. <clears throat> You know, obviously, take care of yourselves, too. I hope that the, the moment... You know, they should instantly game over you if you, say, if you say she wasn't cute. That'd be hilarious. It's like, how dare you? Literally, the entire fan base is up in arms against you. <laughs> Which would not surprise me. That alarm went so long, we were already outside, as it was still ringing. Thank you, skipping scenes. Uh, Kenji's naked, don't worry about that. No one else knows Rin's your favorite, Tom? Really? We didn't talk about this every single live stream yet? You're right. I, did, I didn't say it today, so no one knew. That's fair, Tom. Yes, I won. <clears throat> I don't think... Yeah, don't drag me into this. on my part. You have to backstab Lily. Which is sad. Cuts off the Lily on Hanukkah route. <coughs> Uh, 
Wait, what? Why did it stop skipping? Oh. <coughs> oh, okay. So apparently this is a little bit different. Did I not do this in this exact way before? Oh! You know what it is? It's, uh... I never actually said to don't drag me into this on the Emmy route then. I think the Emmy route required me to, um... Do it the other way, right? Yep. Okay, so this is this is a slight difference. Is you get a slight different scene here. So <clears throat> time for everyone's favorite voice acting. She might be slacking off somewhere, just like Hee Chan. <laughs> Damn it! What is it? She's gonna her need to point out stuff like this. Uncle nods quickly and retreats with haste. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, we are really working hard to make the festival happen. And driving other people insane along the way. Well, good luck with that. Stand up to leave, making my exit before either of them managed to berate me anymore for slacking off. Alright, so can I skip now? Yep. I need help, Rin. Yeah, that's the reason why the She's Never Out required it. And uh, you get slightly different dialogue. So let's see, I think we take it easy, right? Because we don't want to go down the Emmy route. And Emmy gets pissed. Because we never show up ever again at the end. Or what? Kenji's crazy. But Emmy still drags us to meet the mysterious Rin. There's no mystery behind it. We all knew who it was. This conversation is great. Um, I'm, I'm pretty... Guys, you should freeze frame it and read it at your own leisure. <laughs> yeah, the She's in Route does require you to um, uh, at least not take Lily's side. Basically, um, you'd want to talk about your condition. You don't want to hide things from your friends. In this case, you want to be upfront about it. Get a little Rin. And a little Lily, so even though you you know you 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 pissed Lily off a little bit, she's like you know it's okay. I understand you're going for a certain route. No offense taken. And Emmy's like yo, I'm gonna take you around. And then Rin's just here, so the mysterious best girl. Emmy heaves a sigh. Why you heave a sigh, girl? I guess I have to go back and get some. I promised to help with our class project though, so. I'll be back a bit later. Can you manage without it without it for a few hours? Wait, what's this? There's no Prussian blue here. Oh, okay. Rin nods and so Emmy leaves. I say because I like watching Rin paint and because I have nothing better to do. Oh, so I think in the Emmy route, we actually help Emmy find the Prussian blue. And in this route, we're just going to stick around with Rin. Okay. I uh, agree with this. Sit on a box and pick up today's book from my bag. It's a story about three guys drinking beer for two weeks straight and doing little else. Yo, that sounds like everybody's college in America. <laughs> you pay for that shit, you know? Wait, what? <laughs> You're not gonna say anything about Roots to the one with the guide? Yeah, you know. Hey, gotta get gotta get those good endings, you know? I'll let you guys on your at your own leisure get the sad ones. Removes from the spot that was in need of blue and starts slowly working on another. Her foot works to brush steadily against a plastered wall. Layers of paint on top of layers of paint. The mural slowly gains more form. Turn the pages at a leisurely pace. In this chapter, they're drinking beer at a protagonist's friend's place. In previous ones, it was a protagonist's own apartment. It's not a page turner kind of book. Slice the life of someone's imaginary life that makes you wonder why it had to be written at all. Why indeed? Reason for doing something creative. Something incomprehensible. <clears throat> Like Rin, why Rin does paintings. Feels like she and Emmy are the same, going squarely against their fates, as if it's just out of spite. Rin even said something like that. Do something you can't just because you can. Is that what she meant? Is that her reason? Might be Emmy's. She comes off as quite a headstrong person. Rin doesn't give off that kind of an air. Thinking about it, she doesn't give off any kind of air. Or maybe a different kind every time I talk to her. That's half the game, though. Yeah. I know, like, the other endings are an integral part of the game. I, I get that. 
But not here. I'm not doing it today. Uh, why did she say what she said? Why does she or anyone at all paint or draw or sculpt or write? I've never had much of a creative impulse, so I don't think I can really understand. Yeah, I can tell you, Sal. No creative impulse whatsoever. Yeah, I can tell you, Sal. Wait, what? Makes you feel hollow inside. <clears throat> what a grim thought. Can't really decide whether it's true or not either. Am I content being this way? Can't deny I'm feeling a bit envious or written, but I can't really consider it a flaw of any kind. I'm myself, and she is herself. Still, do need to find something, something that could make me feel a little less lost about myself instead of just drowning myself in these books as I did in the hospital. Can't help but feel disoriented. The new school life, the new school lifestyle, and people around me contribute heavily to my sensation. Try my best to fit into existing social circles, and most of the people I've met have been really nice. Still feels like I'm an outsider, though. Like I don't belong. Yeah, oh, yeah, I feel like that all the time. Wait, what? <clears throat> I don't get it. If I, well, you know, I might do them, but I might not do them on screen. Like if I do it, if I do things on my own time, you know, it's my own time. Shake the feeling off, realizing, realizing that I'm spacing out. I've neither turned a page of the book nor done anything for Rin. She is trying to pour some paint from a big can using only her feet. Did not bother to ask me, or maybe she did, and I didn't hear it. Either way, it looks very unstable. Quickly jump to help her as it looks like she's about to spill the entire contents of the can all over the pavement. Take the can from her feet and pour some in the bowl. <clears throat> she doesn't say anything, and neither do I. Catch a glimpse of her eyes looking silently at me from, un from under her unkempt bangs. It's an unreadable expression, perfect poker face, mixed with a hint of something like a mild surprise. Wonder what she's thinking. Maybe she's wondering about what I'm thinking. Maybe nothing. Penny for your thoughts? Do you have any pennies with you? I don't think so. Then I don't think I'll tell. I'm not thinking anything either, so you're in luck. Except now I just did. She frowns, looking very unsatisfied. <laughs> it's hard to not think about anything, but it's important. I'm about to ask why it's important when some old guy walks up to us, looking like he has some business written. Whoa! Who the... <laughs> <coughs> Who the heck is this this Joseph Josar looking fellow with a pot belly? Mm. Um Alright, here's the question. Oops, I just knocked down my uh horror figure. Let me uh put that back up. What kind of voice should I give this guy? Eh. Let's see, he other than for, other than my uh, surprise first impression reaction, um, he looks kind of eccentric. So that's a that's a thing. Um, hmm. His fashion sense is terrible. Anybody who wears polka dot ties, man, don't do it. That jacket's really tacky, and I like it. <laughs> uh, hmm. <clears throat> He's silver-haired, maybe kind of like a like a crazy old man. Like, oh, good afternoon. How's it going? Kind of thing. But that sounds like over the top and really bad. Like I'm not even trying. So, unfortunately, uh, uh, Methrail is the man to go to for all your old man voice needs. I cannot old man very well. Um, hmm. Don't ask you, Tom, you're very biased. Well. <clears throat> Should I give him like a really dapper, gentleman voice? Like, good afternoon. How's it going? I'm going to go with jovial, slightly dapper. How's that sound, all right? Like, a good afternoon. How's it going? I can make it. Rin doesn't take her eyes off the wall and respond so naturally they can only assume they know each other. I haven't seen the man before, so I naturally wonder who he might be. Maybe a teacher? His hair has faded to a silvery gray, so much so that it looks artificially dyed. Hope well, that's not the case. Small round glasses hang on the bridge of his nose, but it appears he's constantly looking over the lenses rather than through them. He's studying the mural intently over said glasses. 
Good, good. What bold composition you have here. Musa inspects the mural closer, talking to himself about it in a way that makes it obvious he wants us to hear it too. Please don't. Yo, give me give me a session. Then what should he sound like? Like I don't know, man. Like this, I can't get a read on this guy. This guy is weird. Looks weird. Like what other voice should I give him? I don't have old men voices. I think that's a big problem. I don't have a. I don't have. A, I don't have many voices, but uh, I definitely don't have old men voices. I have old old lady ones, <laughs> kind of voices. But yeah, you know, this guy, I can't, I can't get a good read on him. Like I don't know what kind of voice to give him. Um. I can give him Kenji voice, but you know, we only have one Kenji, so I don't want to. <laughs> oh, kind of like a whippersnap. Anything else? Anything else? Um, is he a is he a good character or a bad character, Tom? Let me that that that. Like is he a character that we want to like or a character we don't care about? Or we will not care about as much. I'm assuming this guy is going to show up more than once, too, because this is the first time seeing him. I'm assuming he, and he has a full portrait. I'm going to assume he's kind of important. Maybe not quite Hideaki level, but Hideaki had the best voice, so that was like a boom spot on. And he's definitely this guy's definitely not Jigoro levels of intensity. So, like maybe like a very good, very good indeed kind of voice, like kind of like maybe that. I don't really know what I don't really know what to make of it, but Rin doesn't seem to care much. He's looking around her work sp working space, various bowls of different tones scattered all over. That's good. All right, I'll use that voice. So, hmm, a little more of this. Give me a second. Pour a 50-50 mix of two paints into the bowl to create more of the same pale pink tone Rune was using to fill up the shape of a man's face. Rune watches me doing so, which makes me feel, feel nervous somehow. Her face is so unassuming that it feels feels she's just waiting for me to do something wrong. Man turns to wreck me as well, looking surprised as if he noticed my presence only just now. Maybe he did. Why, hello there! Who might you be? Uh, I'm a transfer student to class 3-3. Sao Nakai, nice to meet you. Muto's class, eh? Well, I won't hold that against you. Wait, 3-3. Three, three. You laugh very loudly. <laughs> Obviously loudly. Obnoxiously loudly. A few small birds take flight from a nearby tree. I'm Shinichi Nomiya, the art teacher. So this is the art teacher. In retrospect... Should have guessed that much. He even looks like one as far as first impressions go. Really? That doesn't... That's not how any of my art teachers looked. All my art teachers had, like, smocks on because it was painting class sometimes. And they were worried about kids flinging paint around. That's a different story. I did not start that fight. Um, or, like, you know, they were dressed like normal teachers. Not this weird, bizarre... And, like, seriously, none of my teachers wore gaudy ties like this one. Any of them. How did you come to end up assisting my protege? I wish I knew. Um, uh, I think, uh... I started a fight with paint then, I didn't. Okay, I think we should say we're interested in art club, right? <clears throat> yes, I'm a little interested in the art club. Because I have no direction. My name is Sao Nakai. I literally choose decisions based off of what the best route is. I blurted out partially and avertly. What do you mean? Nothing specific. I wonder if I could come by sometime, even if it's just to observe or something. I've been thinking that I should join some club or something, so... Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot, uh, Hisao, you were not in a club or anything. Loser. What? 
So no way I have a premeditated move, but a fake sense of determination has really been building inside of me for this past week. And for Tom, for forever. <clears throat> Not watching a stream with your cat? Good. Pet your cat. Evilly. I want to do something. I want to belong somewhere. Might as well be the art club, my shortcomings notwithstanding. Teacher seems pleased. <clears throat> oh, you want to join? Well, we always welcome new people, of course. Club meetings are normal enough. We study various aspects of the fine arts and try our hands at them as well. Or feet. <laughs> he gives an embarrassed cough, but Rin doesn't seem to mind. Take a small amount to cover for the fact that I'm not the only one with vocabulary difficulties in this school. Nomir rebounds from his fall paw by the theatrically checking the time from his huge gleaming pocket watch and slaps his forehead even more theatrically. Gah! <laughs> I really must take my leave now, but if you have questions, I'm sure Tezuka can clarify. So mentioning clarify and reading the same sentence doesn't feel quite right. However, I don't say as much to the teacher since he seems to be in a hurry. Tesca, I'm pleased to see that this little project is going so well. I just stopped by to remind you to not run off by yourself tomorrow. I've invited certain people to the festival for you, and I'm sure they'd like to meet you as well. Something tells me that uh, Rin 100% ran off. She just tried to close the stream. We'll tell your cat. She's a pussy. Cat. I hope I'll see you on Monday then, Nakai. The teacher leaves, and we are left by ourselves again. Rin is still painting as if nothing notable happened. Since nothing, in fact, did, I'm left wondering what on earth is wrong with me. Uh, he saw a lot. Art and I haven't worked well together in the past, at least judging from the grades I used to have in middle school. Maybe a club will be different than an oblig obligatory class. Who knows? She, I, You did, and she tried to bite you, Tom? Well, it looks like you and your cat are having a... Having World War Three there. I apologize for starting it. <laughs> Try to come up with something meaningful to ask about it, but to no available. I'll just go to a club meeting and see how it goes. So I invited some people tomorrow just to check out your painting. He has a lot of art people friends. They like to talk about art. I think he wants to talk about art with them. <laughs> uh, there are people, they do art stuff. That yeah, makes sense, right? <laughs> Somehow, I get the feeling that you aren't too thrilled about it. <clears throat> Rin shrugs non-committally, but still gives an impression of her general displeasure at the idea of having to discuss her painting, or any painting with other people. I don't really like talking about art. It is already a way to talk without talking, so why bother talking about it? I can understand that. It's like being bored and talking about being bored, because you are bored. I'm not following you. Have you ever talked about being bored? It's pointless and not very exciting. All you can really say about it is, I'm so bored. I once spent a week trying to think of something meaningful to say about boredness. It was the most boring week I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds hilarious. <clears throat> 12 20 in the living room? Fair. Uh, that's pretty fitting, don't you think? He gives you a look, the clonic kind of look. The laconic kind that looks like it doesn't mean anything, but it does. Anyway, I don't know. I guess I just rarely can come up with anything to say about art. <coughs> I mean, like, this one you're doing now. I have no idea what to think about it, except that it looks nice. What is this painting about? It's not about anything at all. That's what I like to say, so I did. <laughs> That was a small lie. I say it anyway because I, I would kind of like it to be true. Teacher wanted me to do this, but I didn't have any ideas. Tried to have some, but nothing happened. So now this is a painting without any ideas. But what are, are you painting then? What are you painting then? No idea. Time to think of it. I think I'll call this no idea. Uh, now I started thinking again. This is bad. She shakes her head vigorously for a while. She's <laughs> she shake. Uh, trying to shake thinking out of her head. That amber red hair flies wildly around. This is why I had Emmy help me. She makes it easy to not to not think about anything. You know how she just talks and talks. She just talks, talks, talks about nothing for hours. 
Tiger Head is made of bubble gum from bath jelly. Bubble gum foam bath jelly? <laughs> They're all kind of the same, but not really. It's very helpful if you stay here. I am not sure if that's a compliment or not. It's probably neither Rin being overtly neutral person she is. You know, being the overtly neutral person she is. Basically, he said, he said you're dumb. Because all you do is talk and talk and talk. And uh, you don't actually have anything to say. That's great. <laughs> she likes that about you. So, is there anything specific you'd like me to do to make you not think? Just be. So without knowing what I should do, I just sit on an empty box to watch her continue with the painting, idly leafing the pages of the beer drinking book. <laughs> Rin has a serene expression on her face, dark green eyes hiding what she might think behind them. No wait, she's supposedly not thinking anything, right? She quietly hums to a tune, interrupting every now and then with polite requests for more paint or another kind of brush. Her concentration is admirable, even though she seems to be sleep deprived and under pressure to finish the job. Inch by inch, the painting gets more, gains more form, details being added on top of details, colors entwining with each other, filling the empty spaces, growing on top of each other. I find myself thinking about inspiration and motivation to create art again. Where does one get ideas? They don't come out of nowhere, and I don't think there are muses that magically inject some inspiration in your head. That everyone? Basically. It's true. Uh, actually, uh, you know what? That's not true. I know some people who don't talk at all. They just don't talk. They just won't talk. Don't feel like it. Never want to. There are some people that are like that. Ideas have an origin and a purpose. The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that Rina is lying about her mural, or at least twisting the truth. Maybe she doesn't even realize it herself. You can't do anything creative without having an idea of what you are going to create. That would go against the definition. Every stroke must be decided to be drawn. Even if it's made at random, then that too is a conscious decision. So her painting, even this one, must be based on having some deliberate goal or idea of what to paint. Rin's idea is to have no idea, as she said. Does that count as having an idea? <laughs> Tom, that is too real. Logical paradox? That seems to be Rin's modus operandi for, uh, for most normal interactions, so it surprised me if she hadn't even noticed this herself. I wonder if I should bring it up, but... I'm not sure if I want to engage in an argument about logic with this girl. One of us would probably end up short-circuiting fairly quickly if we discard the thought. We're just squirming and shuffling restlessly. Her usual blank visage breaks occasionally into pretty difficult-looking expressions, the kind that one just doesn't come up with accidentally. Everything all right? Yes, no. My back started hurting again. This painting is too big, after all, and it's hard to paint in this position. Want to take a break? After I finish this part. Of course she doesn't take a break, and I don't bring it up again, because that would be completely and utterly pointless. You saw we lose. Yeah, exactly. Rin continues her work, and I stay with her. I like to watch her paint. I'm going to be a member of the same club she's in now. Rin will probably win a ton of arguments just because she's like, eh, you know... Whatever. <laughs> when she declares the mural to be finished, it's already so dark that I have no idea how she can tell. There's no celebration, no general sense of a job well done. To the tire laconic, I'm done. And we both go to sleep. And Emmy never came back, right? Where did Emmy go? Oh, where's Emmy? Hashtag, where's Emmy? Reading from council president? Nothing would get done. Or maybe all everything would get done. People come in, argue about the budget, and she's like, whatever. <laughs> Next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Lazy bum. Can I skip this? It's just skippable, yep. Gonna do this Kenji thing. Oh, uh, is this the one he just asked, like, what are you gonna do? Okay. Well, I just joined the art club, so I guess I'll go help with them. I'll go with them. Okay. You did what? <laughs> Join the art club. Man, that was a bad move. Really bad. You don't know what kind of girls there are in the art club. Troubled, angsty cuties with two, who tear your heart out and eat it raw. Well, I know one art club member, and I don't really see Rin suddenly becoming a psychotic murderer. <laughs> that seems unlikely. 
If we get the best part of the route today, then what's the what's the rest of the route for? Come on, Tom. Don't say that. Don't fool yourself. You have no idea what you're dealing with here, man. They are the worst kind. They drag you in with all this fancy fancy shit, and when you least expect it, BAM! Bam what? Can you seem slightly phased at my skepticism, but not any less loony? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Tread carefully, man. Tread carefully. He fingers his scarf nervously faster and faster like he's trying to start a fire. Then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. I will know. Okay. I'm going to have to find some place to hide in. A safe haven. And then knock the lights out myself so that I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Later, dude. Alright, and then we just skip, right? Uh, right into the very next scene. Cool. Anyway. <clears throat> the happy above of the crowd greets me as I push myself through the main door and step outside. School's grounds were transferred, transformed into the festival grounds over yesterday and this morning. Colorful stands lined at the main walkways from the main entrance to the school building. Some people are still carrying stuff to and fro. Behind most counters are relaxed students who look like they are good to go. I see other students have been up early to finish the preparations. Yup, they are the most important lines in the entire route. I know, I missed it. Sorry. Even though I've already read them multiple times. Anyway. I feel like guilt passes through me, but it soon goes away. I'm just a lowly transfer student after all. Oh, it's not my fault. Oh, I see how it is. His sow. Lazy bum. Some visitors are already strolling around the grounds. There are some young families which the pure parents try to keep up with their overenthusiastic offspring. These students of our own accompanied by their parents. Ten seconds for Skipper Two Four, yeah. No, this is a speed. Gotta go speed speedy. A lot of old and young people are here for no reason I can imagine. Uh, Carolyn bursts into life and the principal's squeaky voice announces the opening of the festival order PA system. FESTIVAL! START! Everyone applauds politely, if a bit unenthusiastically. Alright, everyone applaud unenthusiastically. Yay! Speed reader Katawa Shoujo. You know visual novels are not allowed on the uh, speedrun? Ports? Which I guess makes sense, actually. A school festival. I didn't really have festivals at my old high school. Feels kind of old-fashioned, especially considering the school I came from. But it's still somewhat exciting. A day off feels sweet after the first week of hard work, despite me lying on the hospital bed for four months prior to this. I call even wishing that I could go to the math lessons during my stint at that hospital. I can't remember the program for the festival, even though Muto went through his during class just the other day. Step off the dorm steps, intending to take a tour around the ground to see all the stuff the others have set up. Only make it down to the bottom of the stairs. Few people are studying Rin's mural on the wall, while the artist herself is lounging on the sidelines, leaning against the wall and looking extremely bored and mildly under the weather. Good morning! Hello. How's it going? Nowhere. I'm stuck. What do you mean stuck? I mean, I can't walk stuck. I think my legs are out of order because of yesterday. Does it hurt? It's hard to say. Maybe. The strain of working on the mural is greater than she let me know. I thought it was just a bit of tired muscles or something. I need to ask something further, but Rin swiftly moves on to another topic. Teacher's friends came by. Then they head into town for lunch asked me to go. It was a good thing my legs hurt so much. We are stuck sitting there. That's not good. I'll just wait till I can walk again. It should be either sooner or later if you think about it for a while. Chijo was happy that I finished the mural. He should be. I wonder if it's finished after all. Oh? I thought yesterday that I had done everything, but now I'm not so sure anymore. I should pay more details. Maybe. Probably. It's very hard to decide. Fish or not, the mural looks great in broad daylight. Various human body parts repeated over and over in a wildly mutating, mostly disfigured variety are the main element. No, no, Tom. He's worse than you. 
They're rough looking, as if thoughtlessly placed and rudimentally painted. A great deal of thought and care has gone into each and every one of them. Does this one have a frog growing out of his head? It's a goldfish. What's that? It's nothing. <laughs> anyway, the wall is so wide I have to turn my neck from side to side to see the entire painting. It's hard to consider it as a single piece. The elements don't seem to fit together. I guess they do create some kind of hole. Abstract as it is, I have no idea what it's supposed to be portraying. But well, it looks nice. That's enough for me. Sell myself next to Reen, leaning against the wall like she does. Uh, art. Art is not censored, that's why. The happy noises of the festival are becoming louder as more and more folks enter the grounds. The dorms are far from the main attractions in the main building. and stands around the courtyard, so most visitors have not found their way here yet. Somewhat bored expression settles on Rin's face, making her look detached from everything that's going on around her. She's being awfully quiet. I wonder if she's in pain. So, what did the art people say about your mural? A question wakes Rin from her daydreaming. She lazily turns her face towards me. I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, like I think that like that would that wouldn't even flag YouTube. Just it's just art. Yep, how's it going, Miku? Yes, it's art. It's Rin. It's Rin. It's art. Okay, everything. Everything is art in Rin. What? This is the route. I think they liked it. Maybe they did. It's the best girl stream for Tom. Yeah. What about you? Are you happy with the mural? Cause I kind of, I kind of participated. It'd be terrible if you were unhappy. It tilts her head, biting her lower lip. I think it came out decently. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It's just, it just is. I guess I'm all right at being empty-minded. Can I ask for something else? Well, what does the painting really portray? I thought about yesterday when he said that it doesn't portray anything. But that's a logical fallacy, isn't it? You can't make something out of nothing, not even art. Rin frowns and turns her head back towards the clouds. I don't know. I... I'm not good, I'm not really good at explaining things. It's just a mural. There's nothing special to it. I said it already. Sounds annoyed at my inquiries. I didn't know what I paint, so I decided to paint just a mural. Come on, we could still get along and still like favorite girls that are different, guys. Like, for example, uh, my favorite girl is Lily. Just like her the best. That's it. I like all the girls, though. They're all really interesting people. And that's what makes it so good so far. It's a mural that portrays a mural. No, wait. I thought up a better way to say it. Trays itself. So its mural, its muralness is at the maximum, at least as far as I can do. If you think it has some meaning, I think that's the same as this one has. That makes no sense. Meaning, I feel the corners of my mouth turning upwards into a smile that's just a tiny bit bothered. I've never understood art in the deepest meaning of the word. I get the basics. How art is supposed to be only means. Only a means for exchange ideas and thoughts. However, I never learned how I should interpret a piece of art to somehow divine what the artist intends to say through it. I know it's not any special skill, but somehow, brain never can connect art with anything else than what I see. All I see is a mural. Really? Rina has the smallest fan base? I can admire the technical skill, after all. Even though even I know the difference between bad art and mediocre art. Mediocre art and good art. But that's as far as I can go, so don't ask me about ant meanings, Rin. Reply sure made me reluctant to ask her about it any further either. So, what are you doing when you get on your feet? Nothing. Nothing? There's a festival. Don't you want to go have some fun? I'm fine like this. You don't like socializing much, huh? I think we're arguing more for her than for myself at this point. It's not that I'm particularly thrilled about the festival either. Just a bit curious to see what it's like and that's about it. Her answer is unsurprising. No, I don't. 
I guess me neither in the end. You should go if you want to. I know, but I can keep you company. I'm not used to all this just yet, so it's okay to take it easy. I can leave though if you want if you want to be alone. I like it if you are here. Circle around each other with words, but eventually end up somewhere. For saying that makes me feel feel oddly happy, so I stay. Her presence is something I like too. The odd, warm aura of serenity that she seems to emanate makes it comfortable to be silent. I really like that. Oh, JSR? Yo, I can see that. I can see that. Alright. Watch people walk by, the two of us silent, everyone else chattering happily among themselves. Students are leading their families to the dorms to show their rooms. Pass us in the mural, maybe glance at it once or twice. Pay less attention to them, more to my companion. Try to figure out, figure my way past her cryptic, unreadable wall of a face. Green's eyes flicker restlessly from one person to another as they walk by. She waiting for people to stop at the mural, maybe secretly hoping someone would comment on it. I don't think anyone would assume she was the artist. Just sitting here like a pair of hobos, after all. She doesn't even have hands. Wonder if it's even in Rin's style to fish for compliments. He seems so aloof. More people walk by, some of them pointing their finger at the mural. Mural exchanging words that I can't make out. Someone drops a snow cone on his shoe. Too bad for him. Ha! Everyone seems to like it. I suggested tentatively throwing a topic in the stale summer air separating us. Rin doesn't answer right away, but by now, I'm mostly used to her occasional slowness when she must talk. It's like she takes great care of picking her words, which is really unbelievable when you consider the jumble that comes out of her mouth. I wanted to make it so that you can you can just look at it without thinking. Then I realized that it doesn't make any sense, so it became something like a mix of this and that. From far away, it looks like someone vomited a herd of butterflies on the wall, which is exactly what that obnoxious president person didn't want. Is that, wor is that word that? What word? That. What is the word for more than one butterfly? Butterflies? No, like a herd or a school or a heap. Oh, I don't know. Flock, maybe? That's wrong, too. Maybe people like vermin. <laughs> maybe people like butterfly vomit. <laughs> did anybody just laugh at a child that dropped their snow cone on their shoe? Hell yeah, I did. Rin looks at the mural looking surprisingly unhappy. Middle could be better. Usually I like in-betweens, but this was a pain in my butt. Not literally, of course. Then again, I did get that too. Guess it was literally after all. Don't be so critical on yourself. She looks at me funnily, but shuts up. At about this point, I start thinking if I should really leave and do something more constructive on my Sunday. This is the pinnacle of social failure. A whole free day. Festival right outside my doorstep, and what do I do? Sit here with Rin, two bystanders with nothing to do except to think what a pity it is to be just a bystander. And realizing how pitiful it is, I don't do anything. I don't stand up and take off for a day of fun. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Hmm? Fidget, fidget. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Rin is shuffling about restlessly, constantly swinging one leg over the other knee, and then back again. She has a very irritated look on her face. Something wrong? Yes, no, yes. She suddenly hops up on her feet. It's surprising. I thought she was still rendered immobile, but apparently that's not the case. I have to go find Emmy or someone. I need some help with something. I can help you. Yeah, how's it going, King? We started the Rin route. The end. No, it's okay. One of us has to stay here in case something happens. Don't be ridiculous. Nothing even remotely interesting has happened since I came here except that one guy who dropped a snow cone on his foot. Let me help you, since I'm bored. So what is it? When his lips flatten tightly against each other into an almost perfect horizontal line, she closes her eyes and draws in a deep breath. She opens her eyelids, a frighteningly stern look in her dark eyes takes me aback. So, you might not want to hear this, or maybe you do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter, and even if it did, you are not leaving me any choice. I'm having my period, I need some help regarding that. However, I don't feel that our relationship is yet on the level where I can allow you to pull my underwear down in the girl's toilet. Even if you offer to. That's why you should stay here while I go and look for Emmy. As blood rushes to my cheeks like the rising tide, my brain 
tries tries desperately search for an answer. The only thing I can think of is how that was the most coherent thing I have heard coming out of Rin's mouth during those four during these four days I've known her. Well, here we are at the best uh, at one of the greatest moments of all time. He saw shot himself in the foot. Maybe he's the one that dropped a snow cone. Yes. <laughs> Not wanting to meet Rin's eyes, I turn my face aside, pretending I'm looking at someone's parents. In the corner of my eye, I see Rin turning on her heel and walking off without further ado. I feel like I, I feel like going to hide under some rock. I wonder how long Rin will be gone, or she will return at all. You think not only in the foot? Fair. She does return eventually, appearing out of seemingly out of nowhere and sitting back to where she was, next to my place. I'm back. She says it flatly like my blunder never happened. I prefer to forget the whole matter as well, so I keep quiet. Time passes in standstill. The sun gleams from high above the main building. It hits me directly in the eyes, but I just squint instead of moving. In a bit, it becomes painful to keep my eyes open just a little. My temples start aching. My head hurts. I think this day gave me a headache. Can you believe it? Are you hungry? How does that relate to headache? It's not. I ask because I am. Her oblivious seriousness melts in my irritation with its ridiculousness. I find the corners of my mouth turning slightly upwards again. You know what? So am I. I'll go, I'll go get some food for us. What do you want? My treat. Doesn't matter. Turning with the food, I give one portion to Rin, taking the other for myself, and we dig in without a word. Rin looks upwards, fork hanging out of the corner of her mouth. What are clouds? I always thought they were thoughts of the sky or something like that, because you can't touch them. Thought like that when you were when you were a kid? No, last week. Maybe because sometimes my thoughts feel like clouds, fluffy and white and slow. Like the sky was in my mind, like my mind was the sky. The sky of your mind. Close your eyes and think of a sky. You won't be able to think of anything else until you stop. I try it. It works. Magic? Open my eyes, I see Rin studying me with her eyes. Feels uncomfortable because she doesn't say anything. I turn away. Clouds are water. Evaporated water. You know, they say that almost all of the water in the world will at some point of its existence be a part of a cloud. Every drop of tears and blood and sweat that comes out of you. It'll be a cloud. All the water inside your body, too. Goes up there sometime after you die. Might take a while, though. Your explanation is better than any of mine. Because it's true. That must be it. <laughs> Karen eating the food before it gets cold. The wall offers a bit of blessed shade as the sun revolves around the dome of the sky. The afternoon is already slowly making way for the evening, so our lunch becomes more of a dinner. Whatever the word is for an irregular meal like this. Supper? I don't know. Alright, completely irrelevant, but I hope you get good cards. Despite what I decide to call it, it certainly hits the spot. I haven't eaten a bit I mean I haven't eaten a bit since forever. My appetite filled, I let out a satisfied sigh. Rin hasn't eaten all of hers, but seems to be done with her food as well. Lean back, taking the atmosphere. Crowds have thinned already, but the activities are still going. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Why not? It's warm, kind of a perfect summer day when it's hot, but not too hot for comfort. Sun will set soon. Time really has flown by. We've been sitting here for six hours. That supper isn't dinner? Um, it's not, I don't think supper isn't dinner. I just think that um, if you have two words for it, might as well use one separately from the other. That's what I say. Like... Like, if you have multiple words for the same meal, might as well start using them. Like, you know, screw only have a lunch and a siesta and a, you know, have them all. Like, get them all. All of them. Yes, we have. You want to do something else now? No, not really. Me neither. She adjusts her position and leans against the wall. I follow her lead, relax my own body. For minutes on end, we sit there without saying a word. I'm trying to feel Rin's mood from her demeanor. 
tension of her muscles, tiny expressions fleeting on her face. It's no use. She's unreadable as always. Now I'm going to use both. We use supper and dinner. If anyone asks why I'm using supper and dinner, I'll be like, you have to have two. Two evening-ish meals. At least. Midnight snacks as well. You know, take all, all the meals that hobbits have in from the, the Lord of the Rings, you know. The crowd swells to and fro, people happily chattering with each other. Very few people pay real attention to the mural, even less to us. I fiddle with a few odd pebbles absentmindedly. The act of doing something just for the sake of doing something. Pinnacle of idleness. Inch by inch, the sun creeps lower and lower towards the tree line. Changing the color of the sky close to the horizon from golden yellow to orange and red. It's the moment of the sunset draws near. I feel like my stomach is filled with, lead, with lead after eating so heavily. The brick wall feels surprisingly comfortable against my back. Try to fight against the drowsy feeling that has overwhelmed me to no avail. I died. So like, cool. Wake up with a start. Oh, I'm being shot! Oh, there's a firework in my butt. Low boom reverberates through the school grounds. The images of bright sparks flash through my vision like stars. Something rises toward the skies from the direction of the sports field. Tail of fire trails behind it until bursts of red and yellow flame lights to the sky high above the school with another loud boom. Fireworks! Ah! Sudden flash of light against the canvas of the night sky wakens me to realize that it's actually dark already. How long did I sleep? I feel groggy and can't feel my right arm. If I attempt to flex it, I realize why. Rune is leaning heavily against my shoulder, almost falling on my lap. She's fast asleep, not even phased by the fireworks. Her mouth is slightly open and her eyes are peacefully closed, sleeping childlike face of the innocent. Shake Rune gently with my free arm, trying to wake her up before failing that. Moving her so that my other arms liberate from his pinch. His face twitches and her eyelids shut tighter, as if to resist against waking up. She gradually opens her eyes but keeps them half closed, letting the light from the fireworks sneak just past her eyelashes so that her green irises mirror the bright flash of the explosions and looks up to at me and frowns. Just a while longer, okay? His voice is drowsy and slow, leaving her almost unintelligible, uh, intelligibly muttered words hanging lazily in the air. Seems she is not entirely aware of the situation. His head drops back on my shoulder as she leans against me with all her weight. Snuggles against my side, trying to make herself comfortable, make me feel unco very uncomfortable at the same time. I become intensely, almost painfully aware of Rin's warm body and the deep, peaceful movements of her chest against my arm. Because he's a pervert! Our uh, breathing soon returning to the even rhythm. Can't tell I'm admiring her gift for sleeping, or the ease of mind of hers to use someone she has known for less than a week as a pillow. The rockets rise up to the sky one at a time, breaking into the flowers of red and green and gold, accompanied by the oohs and ahs of the audience. Alright guys, we're seeing fireworks, everyone, everyone with me. Ooh, ah. Alright, thank you very much. Try to push Rin's disconcerting proximity out of my mind. And by the way, if you missed it, just wait for next week. It's gonna get, uh, it's gonna re-uploaded and you can ooh and ah in time and in sync with me then. Um, I try to push Rin's disconcerting proximity, proximity out of my mind. For what I can do about it. For what can I do about it? Okay. I just hope her short while... I just hope her short while really is that. One by one, the glittery birds are born and die in the blink of an eye, coloring the dark night sky into a constantly changing abstract painting. Who's more of a perv, Kazuma or Yisao? Probably still Kazuma. But Yisao is pretty bad. To say. I listen to the low booms of the explosions and Rin's quiet breathing, trying to clear my own head of the post awakening disorientation. Plus, let's be honest, it's pretty close only because Hisao was born from the from, from 4 Shan. Thankfully, just a while longer really proves to be just a while. As Rin stirs from her slumber, wakes up again before the fireworks are over. I fell asleep. She finally opens her eyes completely and blinks a few times. Fell asleep on top of me. Twice. You didn't like it? Er, uh, well, uh. Despite the inconclusive, inconclusive stammering, Rin sits upright, drawing herself away from me. Well, you are heavy. 
It's a lie. She weighs next to nothing. But I have to get a jab back at her, even if it's under the belt. The mock protest fails to draw any reaction as Rin's attention is drawn upwards to the flash of the fireworks. She is hypnotized by the colorful play of the explosions. Sal knows what he wants, though. <laughs> A uh, slight tingling sensation goes up and down my arm as blood starts to circulate again. It's unpleasant, but it helps me get rid of, the dizzy, of this dizzy fit. More and more rockets rise up, that, rise up to the sky. The bright colors of their explosions reflect into the clouds. Both of us stare at the fireworks fixedly through the canopy of the trees, enthralled by the show. We'd get a vastly better view of the sky if we moved even a couple of yards, but neither of us bothers to even suggest it. I really do like fireworks. Even though looking at them makes you feel kind of sad, I think. It's like... It's like they want you to look at them so bad, so they, they're they loud and bright. But when someone looks, they're already gone. It's like they were not even real. They are real. I can tell you that. All of this is real, you know? Anime is totally real, guys. Wait, what? If you think about it, nothing really lasts for long. Even something like my life or yours just... A blink of an eye in the history of everything, like one of those rockets. Poof, and we're gone. But we're here, aren't we? Yeah, this is reality. Rin sitting next to me, the loud bangs of the fireworks, the vast unlimited sky. These things are definitely real, even though they won't stay here forever. I feel warm inside. I wonder if it's because Rin is so close to me, or just a feeling of being alive. I don't really know what I should say next. It's alright, maybe I'm just talking to myself. But you know, fireworks are pretty. In the end, isn't it somehow silly to spend so much money on a fraction of a second worth of pretty sparkles? Rin rips her gaze off, the still ongoing spectacle and leans backwards looking at me with a repulsed face. Wow. I never expected you to be such a cynic. Cynic is a pretty harsh word. Rather than that, I think of myself as a realist. Isn't a realist just a word for what a cynic calls himself? The final rocket goes out with a bang of silver and blue. Even the ground's eerily silent for a moment until the crowd starts moving towards the main gate like a cattle herd. Wisp of gray smoke drift towards the dorms from the sports field. The pungent sulfurous smell of gunpowder carries all along feels like it sticks to my hair and clothes. Was that it? I think so. I stand up and stretch my sore back. Sleeping against a brick wall wasn't such a good idea after all. Rin stands up as well and turns to face me with an expectant gaze on her, on her tired features. Although she seems to have trouble focusing her eyes, she is looking straight at me, something I feel has not occurred too often in the past week. <sighs> the fireworks that shows the difference between the English and Americans? Do tell, do tell. Um, so... Then I realize that we have been almost on a date here, as if by accident, even if we did nothing. But wasn't. So why blood is rushing into my cheeks and my speech stammering? I don't know what I should say, especially since it seems... Rin is waiting for me to say something, but luckily she solves my problem for me. Good night, Hisao. Gives me one more lingering look, measuring from tip from tip to toe, turns around her heel and skips off, disappearing into the crowd. <laughs> I mean, Tom, to be fair, in that case, we launched our fireworks because we celebrated doing the same thing to uh, uh to 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 your to England so I think uh it works see our fireworks are just as good the day America went screw you dad basically <laughs> that's the day we celebrate for forever that's kind of a weird thing to celebrate now that I think about it It's like writing an angry letter to your father, but ha! Read this! And the father going, the fuck you doing? <laughs> and the kid runs away from home. No, oh, yours didn't. That's fair. <laughs> okay, good night. Left standing there, giving my giving my response to the cooling night air. Sigh. Festival turned out to be nothing like I expected. I ended up spending all day in one spot we were in, even though neither neither of us agreed on nor suggested that we do anything. I just didn't have anything better to do, and evidently neither did she. Rin's warmth lingers for a while longer in my body before disappearing into the falling night. There you go. It's a plant. It's a paintbrush. It's a Rin. 
painting. Whoa! This that hell head tilt was the best part of the route. Most durable scene of all game. Act two, disconnect. Oh look, he saw already is having troubles. Good. Wait, what? It's already half past eight, but this morning's class has not yet begun. We were supposed to have physics, but the teacher is nowhere to be seen. Had I known this beforehand, I would have slept in too. So the classroom door slams open and Muto grunts his morning greeting to us from the doorway. Good morning, everyone. Muto looks like he has not slept at all. The stubble, his messier than normal hair, and the stained dress shirt creates a less than favorable impression. She had fun last night at the festival too. Yeah, man, I was out getting drinks, getting girls. Unlike you, Isao, you loser. Hey, what? <laughs> Excuse my being late. I ran into unexpected problems. I'm unusual. I'm usually not one for festivals like this, but I hope you all had a good time. After all, these sorts of events are important for you all, since they give you a short reprieve from schoolwork. Class replies with various degrees of enthusiasm. Muto proceeds to take roll and get started. Right then, today's subject is photon particle physics. Wait, really? That's what they're learning? That's awesome. For long, I have descended into a comfortable coma-like state along with the rest of the class, letting Muto's rambling speeches pass through one ear and exit the other without leaving a trace. Now, who could tell us the solution to this problem? He's written a rather easy question on the blackboard. Desperately, tries to get the class to participate. Nobody? Come on, guys. Nakai, how about you? Unfairly singled out in corner, I give him an answer. It causes his shaggy features to twist into a gen genial smile that would scare little children senseless. <laughs> oh, come on, poor Muto, man. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying, okay? Precisely. Good work, Dakai. Both disturbed and honored by the fact that he can remember my name only one week after I transferred here. From what I've seen, Muto has serious trouble remembering the names of anybody else in the class. Most of them have been here since the first year. Probably because they're all not science oriented and he really likes science. My name is Muto. I love science. I really love science. It's amazing. There's so many things to be observed in the world that even if I could part just to one of you, that same feeling. I feel like I've completed my job. Trickster? Dark Slayer? <laughs> uh, the room settles into a dreary mood. Students and teacher alike trying to get back on track after the festival. For your last week must have been frantic for everyone. Not a minute too soon, the lunch bell rings. Who's yelling, make way important business? Is it uh, Emmy? It's either Emmy or our new teacher, right? Turn my head just in time to see other people scatter out of the way as someone charges from the far end of the corridor towards the stairwell. It's too late to realize I'm standing in the middle of the corridor, directly in the way of the oncoming human projectile. Oh, it's Emmy. Emmy. Try to skip back towards the doorway. Unfortunately, the person running towards me dodges in the same direction. The following fraction of a second, several things come to mind in sequence yet almost simultaneously. First, I recognize that the girl who is on the collision course with me is Emmy. He saw his main character pri pri uh, priority, that's why he remembered? Fair. Also, big goof. Second, I realize that it feels somehow very natural to be tackled by Emmy once again. I feel almost comfortable, if not for the reflexive panic and terror. Third, Emmy seems to be carrying a foot-tall stack of papers while running in the hallway. Crashes into me, but at least the impact was a grazing one on my arm this time. Owie! Why does this always happen to me? Gee, I wonder. Could it possibly have anything to do with you running through the car like you were on fire? She whimpers regretfully, looking like a hurt puppy. So it makes me regret my snappish comment, and it's very instant emergence from my lips. <clears throat> but... I was in a hurry. I can tell. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Amy wails weakly one last time she rubs her forehead as if to expel the ache while her gaze sweeps over the hallway floor. She knows her neat stack of papers spread all over the floor in one big mess. Let's out a horrified yelp. Ah! 
The printouts! Oh no, oh no! What am I going to do? Teacher will be get give me a hell if they get dirty. Probably fine. Let's gather them back up. Won't be a problem. Is this the last route? Uh, no. Yes. No. Yes. No. That's the answer, because this is the ring route after all. <laughs> we quickly round up the papers, and Emmy tries to sort the scattered pile in her hands. Back into the orderly stacks it was. Where are you going? Nowhere in particular, I guess. They don't want to be left alone with Muto in the classroom. I think he has a hangover. Have you eaten lunch? Not yet. Well, I'm not feeling very hungry anyway. She looks at me incredulously, as if doubting my sanity for letting such a thing out of my mouth. You should go to the roof. I promised Rin I would eat lunch with her. I bet she'd like company. Uh oh, my lunches with Rin have been remarkably unsuccessful. I know where this conversation is going, and it's hard to not get drawn along, so I have little choice but to play ball. Okay, I'll go pick up some bread or something first. And he smiles brightly before I say anything further. No, no. I'll go and deliver these super quick, and then go buy lunch for us. And Rin too, of course. What kind of bread do you like? It's fine. You really don't need to. Don't worry. It's all It's all right. Consider it an apology. I'll be back before you know it. That's what I was worried about. Don't get into another accident. Rin starts walking down the hallway, but since she's still talking to me, she isn't watching where she's going. I won't. Famous last words. She's already jogging down the stairs as she shouts that not-so-reassuring promise back to me. Sighing quietly, I start plodding along in her wake, but instead of taking the stairs down, I climb upwards. The stairwell up to the roof is unlit and just as creepy as it was before. Her squeaks weakly and protests as I push it open. Hello, Clarice. Anyway, Rin is there too, like Emmy said, lying on her back at the other end of the pebble-covered rooftop for some reason. Predicting something unnecessarily strange again, I walk to her as slowly as possible. Hello... Sounds very drowsy as she says that, says that, stretching the end of the word with a slurred voice. Despite that, her eyes are wide open. I look down at her, my shadow overlapping her face. What are you doing? Rin raised an eyebrow. I thought you had a heart problem, not an eye problem. She answers, challenging the rationale of my perfectly valid question, without even tilting her head to look at me. <laughs> Rin's smart ass comments are infuriating. The worst thing is that I'm not sure if she's doing it on purpose or not. All right, then. Let me rephrase. Why are you lying on your back on the rooftop? She gives a lazy shrug and sniffs dismissively. I'm trying to experience. People probably don't do this enough. What exactly are you trying to experience here? I can't really tell, but... There's probably a reason people don't do... Whatever. She's playing dodgeball with me again, answering my attempt at small talk with riddles I don't want to puzzle out. But I don't want to ignore her either. Yeah. But the reason is that everyone's too busy with their lives to pay attention to the really important things. Like watching the sky? She tears her gaze away from the sky and finally looks straight at me. The penetrating deepness of her eyes once she focuses them on something startling. You know, if you were a girl, I'd be able to see your panties. If I was a girl, I wouldn't come this close to anyone and try to sneak a peek at my panties. I have that much common sense. I wouldn't either, but sometimes it can't be avoided, like now for example. Tell you the truth, I don't really want to peek at your panties, though. Underpants are the soul of a girl. You shouldn't peek at someone else's soul, even if you are not a girl. As a guy, I can understand that. To us, there's some sort of half-mythical object that we can't quite comprehend. Yeah, that's exactly how I think about them, too. What a coincidence. <laughs> really is. <laughs> Alright, guys, remember, underpants, panties are the mystical, the mystical objects of lore. That represent a girl's soul, per Katawa Shoujo conversation that just happened. True stories, anyway. So, do you have a world history in the morning class? I skip class. To do this? Well, I'm not actually doing what it looks like I'm doing. Or at least, I think that's what I'm doing doesn't look like what I look like. But from your perspective, probably. Katwa Apache said one shot bosses. Even more stronger. So it's like their stand, even stronger. Even more stronger. <laughs> yeah, I skipped class to do this. 
I guess whatever your reason is, it's as good as any. Giving in to the tired feeling of my legs, I sit down on the roof next to Reed. The pebbles are not the most comfortable bed in the world, but if she can stand it, I should be able to as well. What are you waiting for? Hmm? Try it. Bend my neck backwards to take a look at what, where she's looking. The silvery blue sky dotted by herds of cloud sheep filled my, he filled my field of vision entirely. It's even stronger, more strong than Ultra Instinct, more strong than plushy armies. Panties, Kato Shoujo panties are stronger than that even. I remember in one of the scenes, Emmy just flicked them wherever she felt like. That could have destroyed the world as we know it. <laughs> Nani? Exactly. While it's pretty, the view is nothing special, even though the weather is fair. I give a shrug, trying my best to imitate the nonchalant manner which Rune seems to have evolved to perfection, and lie down on my back. You know what's really funny? In high school, I did this a lot too. Like, I would, like, lay down the bleachers and just stare up at the sky, like, uh. And people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, look at the sky. Duh. <laughs> the stones poke at my back through my thin shirt whenever I shift my weight, even a little, forcing me to keep as still as possible. I tried to ignore the discomfort of myself, instead concentrating on the vastness over us. Far above, the summer clouds drift soundlessly across the dome of the sky. Neither of us has anything more to say. The silence covers the rooftop. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you, Tom. Well, you know, it. You know, diff different, different experience for different people. For me, like it was kind of interesting because whenever I did that, like a friend of mine would be like, "Hey, where were you?" I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I tell them, and they'd be like, "What?" <laughs> I don't understand. I, I, I personally don't understand how I kept my friends. <laughs> the subdued noises of students on their lunch breaks, cadas in the trees, and traffic buzzing past the school are humming pleasantly somewhere in the background. Listen, I had a great time yesterday. Did you? Well, to be honest, no, but it was alright. It's probably the longest time I've ever sat in one place without doing anything, which is kind of impressive. Try to make it sound as convincing as possible. Is that impressive? I think it is. I'm usually too restless to do anything like that. I think I had a good time too. Cloud passed over about above us, casting a shadow on the school. Chill surges drew me from the sudden change of sunlight to shade. Realize that summer is not in its full bloom quite, bloom quite yet. The only measure of time passing is the slow pace of the clouds moving towards the town. Stray beams of golden sunlight leak through the gaps, blinding, blinding me for a moment whenever they hit me directly in the eyes. The blue of the sky looks so unreachable. This reminds me of the time I spent in a hospital where I was bored out of my mind on a daily basis. Somehow it didn't matter for after a while. I learned to appreciate other things besides watching TV and gossiping with people I didn't even like. Comprehensive sensation of calmness spreads from the sight, from my sight to my other senses, finally hitting my brain. Airplane zooms by, leaving two thin contrails in its wake, like a pair of chalk lines drawn from one end of the sky to the other. I wonder where it is heading. Low din of its engines carries all the way down to my ears, although it's barely audible over the racket from the quad. It's nice. It's nice, but I don't understand why this is more important than going to class. Isn't it good to do something you like every once in a while? Of course, but what are you doing? I mean, I snuck up on us without even noticing and is only a step away from me, holding several packages wrapped in plastic film in her arms. She leans forward and peeks over me, overshad overshadowing my face almost exactly the same way I overshadowed Rins before. I wonder how weird this looks, two of us lying on our backs on the rooftop. That's what I asked, too. I'd be more concerned about what you're doing. If I were you, I wouldn't come that close to people who could see your panties. Rin! And his voice is, uh, is scandalized, but she quickly takes a step backward, pressing her hands against the front of her skirt so abruptly that the parcels of bread she was carrying fall. Quickly avert my eyes and glance angrily at Rin. She pretends not to see me. He saw is not like that, right? Right. And he scowls at Rin and crouches down to pick up the packages. <laughs> Uh, wrecked. She wipes the dust off them and skips lithely around me to Rin's other side, which sets herself down. It's one fifteen. You have a sharp knife, Tom. Are you using it to cut open a package so you can uh, eat some 
food from it because that's what I would do at 1.15 a.m. I'd eat food. Anyway, here's your bread. Sorry it took a while. That's alright. Thanks for treating me. Pull myself up into a sitting position and gratefully accept the bread Femi is offering. All three of us ravenously dig into the simple meal. Bread is surprisingly decent and readily fills my stomach. Follow from the corner of my eye and skill with which Reen handles her bread between her feet. I haven't seen you on the track in a few days. Alright, I... Figured it was too heavy a routine for me to start with. So you've been doing something, doing something else? Oh no, Tom! Get band aids, band aid, first aid, first aid for Tom, please, please, first aid for Tom, please, first aid for Tom. <laughs> I've been considering my options. She frowns but doesn't pursue the issue further, for which I'm thankful. And he seems pretty headstrong and wouldn't re really want to get pestered by her about this on a daily basis. Enough burdens to bear what she's named Misha already. We barely finished the lunch before the bell rings, calling us back to our classrooms. Hee chan! Misha waves at me as soon as I enter and starts talking before I even make my way across the classroom. How was your festival? Did you have fun? Um. Still someone on the side on that, I'd say probably. Why? <laughs> just asking, just asking. Christ glint in a way that tells me she's not just asking. Can't even start to guess her motives though. Hurts? You'll get a band-aid, man. As a well-timed entrance of the English teacher prevents us from talking further, she falls back to plan B. I was there all day with Shichan. We had a lot of fun. Were you supposed to be doing work? Don't worry. Everything went really well. I don't reply to that, and she leaves me alone after she's made demands her attention. My own attention, on the other hand, is directed out the windows. Now that I look at it from here, through the window and the foliage just outside, the sky seems smaller. Catch only small glimpses of blue. Everything else is a clutter of noise right in the middle of my field of vision. What experience did Rin want out of staring at the sky? Surely she's done it before. Everyone has. Still use trying to guess her mind. But if I don't do that, then I have no excuse for not concentrating on the teacher's words. Look at the scribbles appearing on the blackboard trying to figure out their meaning with little success. English really is not my favorite subject. We have a strong mutual dislike for each other. Well, I speak English just fine, Sal. Maybe it's time you take it a little more seriously. Just saying. A lot of blood on your phone, Tom. Uh-oh. Get the get the wet naps. Clean them off. Thick, hot afternoon light invades the corridor. I mean, the air feel heavy and lazy. Eh, I'm lazy. My body feels weighed down by it as I drag it two doors down the hallway to the art classroom. Maybe this is part of the reason why I didn't join any clubs before. Afternoons just aren't suited for activity. What? Look at all these people, guys. All these people who are super important. Like, there's Rin. There's the blind kid she was talking about once. There's a girl that's carrying bread. This girl's like, hey. I'm glad they didn't show my panties in this shot. I'm glad this isn't fan service. And this guy's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Knock on the door of the art room and open it. Girl who was possibly doing something important with the scroll of paper. Oh, it's scroll of paper. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Bread in an art class? That's well, where else would you have the bread? Yo, bread's very good in art class. You use it for lots of things, like when you need to wipe off the charcoal and stuff. And then you don't want to eat it afterwards because it tastes like uh, sand. Oh, uh, Girl is possibly doing something important with the scroll of paper she's carrying turns to wrecking me. Smiles in a sweet, if a bit confused manner. Whoa, she came right up to me. I thought this was a CG. I didn't realize it was going to change. And she's like, hey, what up? How you doing? Uh, you know what? Uh, it's not deadly. It just tastes really terrible. Flavorless. Hey. 
Hello. This is Yard Club, right? Yep. You interested in joining? Yeah, in fact, I might already have done so, but we'll see. Give her a weak smile and her own widens a notch, making me feel less nervous. Must be dateless cyanide bread, man. Oh, what's this almond smell? It's not a secret ingredient. What's that secret ingredient? Try it, you'll see. Oh, well, uh... Oh, what's that? Oh, no, it's the Dark Souls Game Over screen! It's like... You died. Anyway. Great. Have a seat, then. We'll start when the teacher gets here. Without even scouting the room for a good spot, I walk quickly to the back of the room and sell myself on a free seat apart from everyone else. Oh, okay, so that's, uh... That's a guy that's like, man, I wish I could see those panties that is not showing. She's like, I'm so glad there's no panties. Here. And then this person's like, I fucking hate everybody. How dare you guys. Anyway, so that that's my interpretation of the people in the room. I hope I'm not right. <laughs> a few other members are lounging in their seats, waiting for the teacher. Rin sits alone on, in a window seat, looking outside. She's the only person here that I know. Although a guy I've never really gotten along with from my own class is here too. Nobody else comes to greet me. Maybe an introduction to the left for later. So I just settle for a silent observation as well. One boy has sunglasses on and outside indoors. Were we not at Yamako? I bet he's the blind student Reen was talking about. Yep. The way proves to be extremely short. <clears throat> Nomiya walks over to stand behind his desk in three long strides and gives a smile and a flamboyant greeting. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, God, my voice. First things first. Hisao there is a new member, so everyone get along with him. He winks at me unsettling. Hey! Wink, wink, wink! All eight members of the club, including myself, answer his greeting with considerable le considerably less enthusiasm. Fuck that guy! What? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> so people finally straighten up in their seats and begin to pay attention. I think some of you still have projects to work on, so please continue with those if you like. As for the rest... I was thinking that today we could do some rough studies. How does that sound? Nobody answers except with some unintelligible murmurs, which Nomi apparently interprets as a unanimous approval. All right then, everyone. Everyone not working on other projects, choose a partner and draw a sketch of one another. You should be able to complete this today, but if not, we continue it next time, or even do it again if you find it interesting. Remember to pay attention to lighting and shadow and give it your best shot. Hit it with your best shot. Draw away. Anyway, pairing up. Feel pretty awkward about it, hardly knowing anyone here. Wish someone asked me to be their partner. But stand up and move their chairs closer together, but nobody comes to me. Pretty soon, everyone else has paired off. Friends friends team up with each other, but I'm left alone. Oh, well, there is Ring. She's sitting in the furthest corner of the classroom, still staring out the window and seemingly uninterested, taking part in the exercise. Since she's the only other person without a partner, I walk to her seat. Can't see her face because her hair is covering most of it and she's looking away from me. Rin? Call out to her, no response. Hey, I want to partner up? You're the only one I know here. Seemingly finally acknowledges my presence, head turning like a robot as she looks to see who is addressing her. <laughs> no! Rin doesn't answer. I don't want to repeat the question either. I'm sure she heard it the first time. Why doesn't she say anything? Can't be uh, such an awful fate to be paired up with me, can it? She doesn't look at my face and instead stares directly at my chest and stomach. Oh, okay. Why not? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's just so great. She's like, silence. Oh, okay. Okay, good, great, great! I'll get the stuff for us. Looking at the equipment Omiya has prepared for today's meeting confused me. Instead of graphite or pencils, we are apparently supposed to do ink sketches. I've never, I've never done anything like this before. The teacher, however, seems confident in my ability to adapt to this medium. Simple! First, you do the outlines in ink. You let them dry, and then you shade with the diluted ink. This is called India ink. It works like watercolors. If you're uncomfortable with it, use a pen instead of a brush for the outlines. Got it? Pick up paper, water cups, one pen for me, one brush for Rin. Ink for both of us, then return to Rin. 
Grabbing a vacated chair from nearby, I see myself directly opposite her. Do you want me to do it with my foot or my mouth? What do you say? <laughs> oh, oh, that was a line that Hisao never thought he'd get asked, oh, even in a jest. Hisao Nakai, happiest man alive for 5.2 seconds until you realize, oh. Anyway, she tilts her head and her brows forming questioning arcs, as if she doesn't understand they didn't understand the question. Also, if you didn't understand what I just said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't ask about it. Give yourself 10 years. If you still don't understand, ask me then. Anyway. I don't mind trying either way. You'll look better if I do it with my foot, though. With your foot, then, if it's all the same to you. In this route, Tom, I think he's more like you in too many ways now. Nodding an answer, Rin gets up from her seat and kicks off her sandals. To fluid motion, she picks up the paper sheet and drops it on the floor, and snatches a brush between her toes before sitting on the floor in a weird half cross legged position. Though I've seen her do this everything with feet, everything with her feet already, from eating to painting, this display of dexterity is so prodigious that I just stare at her, stunned. Do not ask your parents! Please. This is a family friendly stream, even though I might have been fucking swearing before, I don't know. You like Rin's character. I'm just, I'm saying, in this route, Isao is uh, you. Because he's into uh, Rin. Rin contemplates her blank paper intently. Sharp tip of her brush hovers over the paper in anticipation. She raises her head to see if I'm ready. I quickly turn my face away. I'll go first. Make a pose. Kind of pose. It doesn't matter. That's the point. You have to make the sketch of the impression you get, not, not decide beforehand. I end up just sitting in my chair, my hands hanging limply be between my knees. Like this? Okay. No, you guys can't see if I did that. I need this. No, no, it's an improvement for his cell. It's an improvement for his cell, Tom. I look at her, and she looks at me for a moment before beginning. Rin's stare is piercing but impassive, as if she were trying to absorb a part of me into her own self. I feel like I'm physically shrinking under the pressure of her gaze. I get the feeling that for the first time since we met, Rin is actually looking at me instead of my general instead of in my general direction. She sketches with confident bold sweeps with a delicate brush, not caring about the potentially destructive consequences of an accidentally misplaced stroke. For she's happy with the outlines, she stands up to pose for me, stretching her back and legs. This time she doesn't look at me, instead Rin lets her gaze wander around the room. I'm relieved, it's easier to stare at someone when they aren't staring back at you. Even so, I find it hard to get the sketch going. I'm not especially artistically talented, so I'm scared my portrait will turn into something disfigured, especially when compared to my partner's skill. I don't want to embarrass myself too badly on the first try. Rin is not helping the process either. She doesn't stand still for even 10 seconds, tilting her head from side to side to judge her drawing. Biting at her lower lip, looking unsatisfied, and constantly shuffling around like she was on hot coals. Yes, I heard Octopath 2 is a thing. Looking forward to it! Finally managed to make some headway in my sketch, and with my outlines done, we'll start inking in the shadow and light. The way it passes by and remarks on the beginnings of our sketches. Very good! Standing figure is, e standing figure is easier for a beginner to get a grasp of. But I didn't choose to pose. Looked at him and then at Rin in confusion, but he's already moving on to the next pair, and Rin seems unresponsive. Just like when she was painting the mural, Rin has become so engrossed with her work that it seems she has shut me. Uh, shut me, the class where an entire world itself out from her own little sphere of existence. Every now and then, she leans backwards, seemingly to get some perspective. Sometimes she bends forward, leaning down until her nose almost touches the paper. This rocking back and forth looks silly. Suddenly, Rin proves she hasn't completely drifted off into a world of her own and speaks. Are you having fun already? She doesn't raise her eyes from her drawing, which is a good thing. The breaking of the silence sends a jolt of surprise through me as if I'm being electrocuted. <laughs> I don't know yet. It's hard to say. Can't hear how she replies to my answer because it seems she is suddenly having a private whisper conversation with her sketch. I don't understand how she can draw so well when she has the attention span of a butterfly. 
As it seems she lost her interest, I go back to work on my drawing as well. Her dad textured her rinse hair, somehow grasped away the golden afternoon sunlight. Uh, sun lights her bright, bright red tassel of flame and transfer it to my paper in shades of black and gray. Somehow this pen and the bottle of ink seem like such lousy, inadequate tools for the task. Minutes pass, but the sketch doesn't magically look any more like Rin than it did before. The voice wakes me up from despair. From my despair. What about now? Excuse me? Are you having fun already? Why do you keep asking that? <laughs> because it's a club, right? Clubs are meant to be fun. You join to have fun. Are you having fun? Is it important that I'm having fun? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm having fun. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I wonder if I said that just to please her. Or if I really meant it. I can't really decide which is which it was. I don't hate this though. I can honestly say that much. It's good enough for now. There's a lot of time to finish the studies. Quickly ticks away. Desperately try to improve my awful sketch, but it doesn't seem to get any better. I want to start again from scratch, but what would be the point? So no time for that either. Okay, everyone. That's it for today. Please turn in the drawings on my desk, and I'll see you all next Monday. Glass Diary Portrait. Doesn't exactly look like Rin. I guess you could say it portrays her, but that might be a bit generous. I don't know. It's not terrible. Not terrible. Excellent effort, Isao. You have to admit, it, it does portray her. Kind of. And that's close enough. Nose and jaw look hideous. And the shading is terrible. Granted, it's my first attempt at drawing with ink, but it's still pretty bad. That's not bad. She sneaked up behind me while I was lost in thought. Damn it, I was hoping I could smuggle the portrait to the teacher without you seeing it. Why? I'm not really happy with it. I wish I could draw better. You just need some practice. Could you take my drawing to the teacher too? Curious myself about how the sketch turned out. He got the picture from the way Rin was drawing. It looked like she was really into it. It's excellent. Somehow the seemingly arbitrary strokes come together to form an image of my face. Shave my chin to the messy hair to a somewhat gloomy expression. Wow, that looked, yeah, oh, well, okay. Yeah, that was very good. Yeah, Octopath Traveler came out in like summer last year, man. It's time to talk about a sequel. That looks really good. Wow, yeah. No, I should have that picture as my uh, as a background, not not the teacup one, but whatever. I think the teacup one also represents good. He saw all this slightly kind of like interest through a lot of this route, a lot of these routes. So I think it's, it makes sense. Her sketch blows my mind. You're amazing, right? Yeah, that's what we say. Why does he saw look like he was screwed up at school? Because you are stereotyping. People that may or may not do horrible things. That's horrible. He sounds horny. <laughs> Tom. He wouldn't shoot up a school unless it was with uh, a different type of b -b -b -g 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 Wow, you're amazing. It's not that amazing. But thanks. Take a closer look at her work. It's still glistening with slowly drying ink. And it's slowly zooming into my face. Ah! You know? I look kind of grim here. You do look kind of grim. I mean, I agree, but it's also true otherwise too. Like this you, not the you I mean. I do? <laughs> You're just depressed due to no puss? I think so at least. The simple statement makes me suddenly feel incredibly self-conscious. I feel like I need a mirror right now to confirm or debunk Rin. It's a nasty feeling. Maybe it's just her. I hope it's just her. They don't look like that sketch to everyone. It's a good sketch, but somehow I get a really oppressive feeling from it. <laughs> this is the Hisao that will peer into your souls. See ya. I see. Anyway, it looks really good. You really are amazing. Thanks. I'm glad I could draw you. You are an interesting person. You're an interesting person too, but that didn't help me much. My self-deprecation has no limits today, but Rain ignores it, ignores it all. Yeah, you know, I could never compare it, but to see the difference with my own eyes is quite humbling. See, I try to make you look like you think a lot, since you did a lot of thinking. And yeah, I may have overdone the fed up with life expression, but cynics are like that, right? <laughs> I want to retort something snappy, but Nomiya gives me no time to think, ushering us to the door. Hurry up, you two! 
While we've been chatting, the rest of the club has taken their leave. I quickly pick up our drawings and take them to the teacher's desk before hurrying after me. It's already left the classroom. She's not in the hallway to my surprise. Wonder where she managed to run off to in just a few seconds. Would have been nice to talk more. Well, not that I have much to say, except maybe you get back at her for calling me a cynic. So this route he saw was you. Surprisingly late, I already got used to school ending at the same time every day, so I can feel the extra hours in my head and my gut. Growling stomach grinds me that I am absolutely ravenous. I'm so hungry that I dare to try anything the cafeteria staff has deemed edible. Even when I see today's delicacy, fried mystery lumps, the seal of resolve doesn't fade. Stuff the dinner down without tasting it all. It's probably for the best. I don't have much homework to do, but the little I have won't get done by itself, so I stroll towards the dormitories. Preparing for the post-homework lull, I knock on Kenji's door. Responds on the other side, although I can't make out what he said. I try the door, but it's locked. After several seconds, the locks click open and he opens the door. Hey, hi, hey, hey, how, how's it going? Could I borrow a book? The library was already closed after I got away from my club meeting. He's squinting even more than usual and his eyebrows are twitching nervously. Club? That's dangerous, man. Indoctrination, groupthink, brainwashing, you name it. High school clubs are the seeds of conspiracy. Do you know how many secret societies have grown from high school clubs? Watch your back and don't get too deep. You might not come back. I will always be Akira. Yay. I'll have wine for everybody. Wait, what? Okay, Kenji. So how about that book? Er, sure. But return them and don't spoil any of my books. No drinks, no food stains, no bodily fluids. Capiche? Sure. Thanks. Instead of letting me in, he retreats from the door and closing it again. For a few seconds, he returns with a stack of three thick books and hands them over to me. When the topmost one, a familiar emblem stamped on the copyright page greets me. Er, your books? These are from the school library. They are now mine. You stole these? What are you talking about, man? I've been liberating these for the oppressive feminist movement that controls the library. I'm innocent, Tom. i never done that. Please say oppressive feminist movement doesn't mean that poor librarian girl, Yuko. She couldn't even oppress a wet towel. <laughs> Uh, uh. Kenji turns away mumbling something I can't make out and closes the door behind him. Before going to my own room, I enter the bathroom. While washing my hands, my eyes catch my reflection from the mirror above the sink. I try to look for the grimness Rin saw on me, but it's just the usual me inside the mirror that stares back. I attempt to tell myself that this is what I've always looked like, but realize I don't remember what I looked like half a year ago. Very true. Very true. If you don't look at yourself in the mirror every day, how would you know you look different from the day before? Just saying. Wake up all sweaty as if I run a half marathon in my sleep. Odd. I don't recall sleeping badly. It sends a little pang of worry through me. I wouldn't want to have my heart acting up without being able to notice it. Still, apart from the odd exhaustion right after waking up, I'm feeling just fine. Mouth is like sandpaper. I have nothing to drink. Well, let's see. Seeing a witch, it's a good time to hydrate. <clears throat> Delicious water. Oh, so good. Mouth is like sandpaper, I have nothing to drink, so I have to go all the way out to the bathroom and take my meds. On impulse, I decide to take a shower while I'm at it. While I'm in the shower, I make up my mind that this counts as morning exercise. I'm probably compensating with a nice half hour walk after school. Obviously, I wouldn't want to risk possible complications by going running now. Besides, Emmy will never know. I think she's giving up giving up on me in any case, because this is the Rin route and not the Emmy route. What? What what? Walking could be nice anyway, just to get to know the area. There are big forests in the hills behind the school, or I could go down to the convenience store. While sitting while still dabbing the moisture off my skin. While still dabbing! Dabbing on them haters and toweling myself off. Set out to find my uniform. Ah, that be so. Anyway, I quickly button up my shirt and pull on my pants before going outside. Normally during this time of the year, I'd be eagerly awaiting summer vacation, having only been at school for a little over a week. I don't really have that kind of feeling. Still savoring the school life and considering the sharp and awkward, awkward turn my life has taken, I haven't had the time to become preoccupied with, greeting, with getting free of it. Besides, once vacation's hit, it'll be a nice surprise for me on that if I'm not expecting it. So here's the end of term exams looming ahead. Stop dabbing on that anime. It's not me, man. It's Hisao. Hisao is dabbing. 
on his haters. Just all of us, actually, now. God damn it, Sal. Stop dabbing on us. At least I don't have any catching up to do with my studies. My diligence has finally paid off. Push myself past the boys gathering in the doorway and flop into my seat. Floppity flop. I just, have, I just imagine like he saw walking into a seat, flopping around like a magic carpet in it. The corner of my eye, I can see she's and Misha pause their unavoidably animated conversation from almost, almost simultaneously in my direction. Clearly want something from me. I can tell from the way she's in his smiles. It's too obnoxiously bright to be sincere and too calculated to be spontaneous. Yep. Uh oh. Good morning! That is not a Misha voice, but whatever. The greeting is made of 100% cheer and bursting energy. Morning. I'm about to put either two minutes of my response. There you go. Accurate. He's Sal acting right there. Yo, nominate me for the Oscar. <laughs> you don't look very energetic. No wonder. I don't feel very energetic either. I think I didn't sleep well, but I'm not sure. Slaps me in the back and grins. <laughs> the kaboom! Ka! Oh, he saw smacked. Cheer up a bit. It's a great day. Catch Susie's eyes. She has a strange, focused expression on her face. She stops for, she, but she furrows her brows a little. Direct eye contact and looks away. For a moment, I think that she's gonna caught a glimpse of my worries somehow. It's pondering how to respond, but then she quickly strains her glasses and with them her expression. Anyway, we were wondering if you're still interested in that student council position because we're going to make an offer that you can't decline. You can't refuse this one. Wait, what? I wasn't really interested in the first place. You're putting words in my mouth. Not as such, but wouldn't it be nice to hang out with us every day while also being useful at to your school? Well, to tell you the truth, I kind of joined a club, so... It'd actually be sort of hard for me to join the council, too. Even if I wanted to, which I don't, as I said. Is that so? Which club is it, Hee-chan? The art club. Oh, she's just not happy with that one! She's eyes glint in a sinister way as she scowls at me. The way she looks, I'll be expecting the art club to lose its funding before lunch break. <laughs> or the art teacher to mysteriously disappear from the face of the earth. Say, like, oh my, if it isn't the student council president, how can I- I'm Jigoro, and for some reason I'm actually a good guy! Falcon Punch! Ah! And then that's just literally what happened, and our teacher died. And Jigoro got arrested. Yay! And because he was arrested, he left his fortune to Shizune and Hideaki. Yay! That's the, that's, that's, that's true ending, right guys? Before she managed to comment, the teacher finally enters the classroom, getting Shizune and Misha off my back, sending everyone rummaging in their bags for books and pens. I did join the art club, but the first meeting didn't really boost my confidence. I'm not really sure what I'm doing for it, doing it for. I wish I could draw like Rin, but I don't know what I would do if I could. To what end would I use such a skill? I don't really know. In order to teach her sleep-inducing voice, I opened my notebook to an empty page and pressed the needle-sharp graphite tip of the pencil onto it. What to draw? A pony! I drew ponies, right? By the way, that's a quote from a uh, stand-up comedian that was really funny that I watched the other day. Uh, other week? Other month? I don't know when. Chris Porter. Anyway, I can't really think of anything good to draw. As I hesitate and raise my hands, a meek black mark left on me on the previous black pa paper seems aggravating. I can't even seem to get to the starting line, let alone get started. It's almost a physical feeling of being held back. Annoyingly, reminds me of my failed attempts at jogging with Emmy. Look out the window in desperation. Right then, a small bird takes flight from one of the cherry trees that grow everywhere on the school grounds. <laughs> That'd be so fucking good if it happened. It'd be the best, right? Can't really see it clearly. It's not like I could tell one tiny bird from another. But pick it as, a sub as my subject anyway. I'm drawing up the image of a bird in my mind's eye. I turn my gaze back to the notebook and deliberately draw a thick line across the paper to get started. It seems to be mocking me as I can't follow up right away. So it's a start. Getting starts. Getting started is good. Oh, uh, he says he's got to draw the he's got to draw the Twitter logo, guys. Get ready for copyright infringement. 
So I sketched a, sketched a picture on the notebook page. The image of my brain becoming clearer as the drawing takes shape. It's really nothing that, just that nameless nothing, it's really nothing, just that nameless nothing burned on paper. That's not important. Oh, okay, that leg, that leg is going to save him from copyright. My hesitation fades into the background along with the teacher's voice. Continue my struggle. The feathers form a simple planet pattern in my mind. My paper is a mess of too many rough lines despite my best efforts. Ah, uh, looks pretty good though. Realize that I don't really know what a bird's wings should look like. If I try to think about it, I even put the pencil down and close my eyes for a moment. Try to trace the shape of a wing in my mind. Being this serious about it all of a sudden makes me a little frustrated. Our class in our class in middle school was the easy class in between exhausting subjects like math or Japanese. There's this other side to art, the one that you see when you don't just fool around. It's almost like a completely different thing. Hey Chan! Look up to see two girls staring back at me. Misha and Shizuna have carried their chairs to my desk and are now standing by my sides, looking at my drawing. How's math difficult? Well, I can't tell you that, uh, Tom. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this right now. His style's life is about to be really difficult. Uh, how long have you two been there? I think you need more practice. Santa draws a few sharp signs in the air between herself and Misha. She chan agrees. <laughs> Rin said the exact same thing yesterday, but why did it sound less condescending? You shouldn't judge before I'm finished. Besides, do you know it's bad luck to see an unfinished piece of work? Misha cracks into exuberant laughter. What? Don't be silly. There's no way that can be true. Whatever. She says eyebrows furrow dangerously and the movements of her hands become abrupt like the slashing of a knife. She's like, yo, we have to get stuff done, right? You should learn to take constructive criticism better. I would if you actually offer some. I know I'm getting too defensive that she's is taking advantage of it, but I can't help it. What are you two doing here anyway? She wags her finger admonishingly, me, admonishingly at my nose. Tis, tis, he chan. Were you not listening to the teacher at all? We have a group assignment now. I nod bleakly and let them take the lead. So, what do you think of the lesson today? Not much of anything. I didn't listen to a word of it. He just slaps her forehead and shakes her head theatrically. Oh no! <laughs> what are we going to do about you, he chan? <laughs> Luckily, Shizuna and Misha together are more effective than three or four normal people. They can mostly slack on the assignment. I try my best to offer at least some assistance, but I end up being mostly useless. The teacher keeps us in class five minutes past the lunch bells, but eventually lets us off, lets us off the hook. I quickly stuff my books into my bag while Shizuna and Misha carry their chairs back to their own seats. The failure of a bird drawing ends up crumpled and stuffed in my pocket as I hurry outside. The bird! The bird! No! The bird was destroyed in... Oh. So, uh, I think next time... I think this is a good stopping point for the first one. We have now been on the Rin route for like an actual hour. Less realistically, I know. Not that much. We skipped through a lot of chapter one to get here. But here we are. And uh, I think uh, we're going to be going head first, head first, knee deep to the rune route next week. And this is a good introduction. Uh, that scene uh, at the mural was hilarious. Uh, but it looks like, um, it looks like uh, he suddenly became an artist or became interested in art. That's very, that's actually very fascinating. The complete 180 from like his other things. This next day should be fucking amazing. Well, it's a good place to stop for now and uh, enjoy it for next week. But for now, this is Anime Fan RK2K. Thank you very much for joining me tonight on tonight's Visual Thursdays of Katawa Shoujo. Uh, it was fun playing with only one hand because I hurt my other one. So uh, if there was any weirdness, I don't know. I don't think you guys noticed. Hopefully you guys didn't notice. Hopefully I did just fine. But um, yeah, I need to do something about this. But yes, thank you very much for watching. Have a good night. Have a good morning. Have a good whenever. See you all. Peace.